Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. So we are still in week two of our Thanksgiving menu series. If you've missed me week one, then that might mean that you're not subscribed to the channel. So take a second, hit the subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so that way you do not miss any more of these delicious holiday recipes. Today I'm going to be bringing to you my apple galakto buraco. Galakto buraco is basically Greek custard pie. It is just as popular as baklava in all Greek homes across the globe. I'm going to take it to the next level and make it, give it a little bit of Thanksgiving uh, makeover by topping it with apples and cinnamon and all delicious fall flavors. It's going to have a buttery phyllo crust, a delicious creamy semolina custard, of course the apples, and then once it's baked we're going to pour an aromatic syrup on top. Let's go over the ingredients so we can get started. For the syrup we're going to need some granulated sugar, a stick of cinnamon, some water, and pure vanilla extract. Then we have some whole milk, a little bit of salt, two apples, two yolks, and two whole eggs some melted butter, some regular number four phyllo pastry, granulated sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, finely ground semolina flour, and cornstarch. So as always, we begin with the syrup. Now in a little saucepan, I have the granulated sugar with a stick of cinnamon. To that, I'm just gonna add the water. I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, make sure you consistently stir it so that way the sugar doesn't burn on the bottom. Once it comes to a boil and the sugar is dissolved, I'm gonna take it off the heat and just pour in the vanilla extract. Then I'm just gonna set it aside to cool completely. So as the syrup is cooling, now we're gonna go in and make our custard. I poured all of the milk, four cups of whole milk, into a saucepan and it's heating over medium heat. We're waiting for it to come to a boil. Now in the meantime, in my bowl over here, I have the semolina flour, the cornstarch, I'm gonna add the sugar, a little pinch of salt, and the eggs. We need two whole eggs and two yolks. This is gonna be ultra smooth and creamy. Save the whites for an omelet for tomorrow morning. And we're just gonna whisk everything together until it's nice and smooth. So once the milk almost reaches the boiling point, you can let it boil too, but honestly, we're gonna cook it a little bit further. So as long as it's scalding hot, you can begin to add the milk to the egg mixture. We're gonna temper the eggs so that way the, their temperature rises. Basically, that's what temperature uh, tempering means. And that prevents them from scrambling when they um, hit the milk because the last thing you want when you're making dessert is scrambled eggs in your custard. You want it to be nice and smooth and creamy. So we're gonna add a little bit of the milk like about a half cup at a time and we're going to whisk it add a little bit more so when you add about three quarters of the hot milk into the eggs then they're going to be ready to add back into the pot or the saucepan and we're just going to return this to medium heat and we're going to cook it and just until it comes to a boil once it comes to a boil it should thicken and it should be the perfect consistency so this is the consistency that you're looking for once it thickens then you're just going to want to take it off the heat and then at this point we're going to add two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract and just like that the custard pie of the custard part of the custard pie is ready. So now it's time to assemble the whole thing. So I have a 10 inch round pie pan. This is also known as a deep dish pie pan because it's two inches deep. It holds a lot of filling. If you try to make this in a thinner pie pan, like a one inch or something like that, you're gonna have too much filling for this. So make sure you have the right pan. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the phyllo. You wanna thaw it out overnight in the refrigerator, then leave it on your countertop for about one to two hours in the daytime so that we can come to room temperature and it's very easy to work with. We are not gonna use this whole pack today. All we need is 12 sheets. And this is the number four, which is the regular phyllo. It's a thin uh, phyllo. So we're gonna work with one layer at a time. If you're pretending that your pie pan is a clock, you're gonna start at the three o'clock position and you're gonna lay one sheet of phyllo in there and just drizzle some butter on top of that. So half of the sheet is gonna be inside of the pan and the other half is gonna be hanging outside of the pan. So we're gonna do three sheets on each side. There's the second sheet and the third sheet. And don't worry too much if the sheets tear a little bit, no problem. Now we're gonna start at the six o'clock position and it's the same thing. We're gonna drizzle butter on each layer and do a stack of three sheets. Then we're gonna to move to the nine o'clock and the 12 o'clock, that's all we're doing. The last sheet goes on just like that. On the last sheet, you don't have to butter it because the custard is gonna go in there. Now go ahead and pour all of that custard into the center. And then just lightly butter all of the layers that are hanging outside of the dish. And now we're just gonna gather them up and create a little crust. 
And then we're going to take this remaining butter. We're just going to leave about a tablespoon or two of butter because we're going to brush the apples when they go on top. Just brush the sides of the crust so that way it gets nice and golden and flavorful. Now you're going to have some phyllo left over. Just wrap it up in some plastic wrap and you can store it in the refrigerator. Make sure it's airtight in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry up. I'm going to set this aside and now I'm going to prepare my apples. I'm just cutting around the core and I like to leave the skin on. Now I'm using Gala apples because they're a little bit sweeter than the Granny Smith. I like the Gala apples much more in this and these are little small apples. So these are two small apples. If you're using a a bigger gala apple, maybe all you need is one. You just need enough to fill up the top of the custard so that we can cover it. And, you, and we're just going to thinly slice these apples so that way they cook evenly. Now if you prefer pears, you can definitely put pears on top of this if you'd like. Pear and almond goes really nice together, so if you are using pear, then you can definitely do a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of pure almond extract in the custard instead of just the two teaspoons of vanilla. Now I'm just going to arrange the apple slices on top. Now you can create whatever pattern you like, it doesn't matter. I just slightly overlap them because I want to get a lot of apples onto this custard pie. After all, it is going to be a Thanksgiving pie. That looks good to me. Now I'm just going to brush them all with the butter. So any butter that's left over, I'm just going to go ahead and generously brush around the crust. Now I'm going to sprinkle some granulated sugar on top of the apples. And this is optional, but I like to do it. I'm going to add, I'm going to dust a little bit of ground cinnamon over the top. And it's ready for the oven. So my oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to bake on the center rack for about 45 minutes to an hour or until the apples are perfectly tender, the custard has set, and all of the phyllo around is nice and golden. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. So I just took my pie, pie out of the oven. It took exactly 55 minutes for the custard pie to bake, for the apples to be beautifully tender, and the crust to be golden all around. At this point, the syrup should be nice and cool. I'm just going to go ahead and pour all the syrup around the pie, concentrating on the, um, on the crust especially. And we're going to let this sit for about two to three hours or until the syrup is absorbed and the pie sets so that way it's easy to slice. If you were to go in and slice it right now, it would basically, the whole thing would be like pudding. You wouldn't be able to slice it. You would actually have to scoop and serve. It's not recommended. Let it sit a few hours. As soon as it sets and all of the syrup is absorbed, you will see that it's going to be much easier to slice. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a little while. So I opened the windows and I did everything I could so this pie can cool down as fast as possible because it is like torture smelling this thing and not being able to bite into it. It just smells amazing in here. You can smell the apples and the cinnamon. And there's something about butter and phyllo baking in the oven that just makes your house smell like uh, like heaven or something like that. So good. I'm going to go in and take a bite. Oh my god, you guys. That is unbelievably amazing. The phyllo, the crust on the bottom is not soggy at all. It is perfectly crisp and there are lots of layers in it. The filling is so creamy and there's something about semolina that it just gives it a little bit of a hearty texture. It's perfectly sweet from the aromatic syrup. The apples on top are perfectly cooked and the cinnamon just gives it that perfect kiss of spice. I think you guys are definitely going to love it. Your guests are going to go crazy when they see this thing and you don't have to serve anything else with this. You just take it out. You don't have to worry about whipped cream. You don't have to worry about ice cream. Just put it out. It would be a good idea to slice it before you put it on the table so that way everybody can just take a piece easily. One thing about this pie, it is best uh, made the same day that you're serving it, but you could take a shortcut and just assemble the whole thing without the apples on top and do not bake it. Cover it with plastic wrap and leave it in your refrigerator and, and then take it out of the fridge the next day, top it with apples and then bake it just the way we did today until it's nice and golden and the apples are tender. If you were to put the apples in the fridge straight away, they would turn brown by the next day. So you just, you know, the, that simple step will just save you a lot of time and effort. I think you guys are going to love it. The recipe is in the holiday ebook number two. Go on over to demetriusdishes.com and download it. Let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time. Yes, sir.